What's up, everybody? Welcome to another live stream. My name is Brandon Hicks. I am your host and a Blender Foundation certified trainer. So uh, if you are just joining us on the live stream for the first time, uh, typically we talk about 3D stuff and we get into Blender topics quite often. But this week we're taking a bit of a break to jump into a new project. And I thought it might be helpful to kind of get into Photoshop and talk about how to prepare for a project. So in the streams this week, we're dealing exclusively with a new creature design. We're going to be doing a dragon. And uh, so tonight we're going to be working on how to do some uh, more detailed up line art, some three quarters view of our creature. And uh, we're going to be getting into some tips about that. So I hope you're excited. Uh, it's going to be fun hanging out for the next couple of hours with you guys and just talk and shop. So uh, let me transition my screen over here for Photoshop. And then we can take a look at what we got going on here. Okay. So uh, if you've been watching recently, last night we jumped in and we uh, worked up some more designs and tried to figure out the direction we wanted to take this dragon. Uh, and so I'm going to do a recap tonight and then tomorrow night I'm going to keep doing the recap. So if anybody's joining in for the first time, no worries. You'll be able to follow along as we get into this. Uh, so I, I worked on this last week in a stream and we talked about doing some concept art. And so the idea was just to get some, some brainstorming, some ideas down on paper, uh, working in Photoshop and just trying to see what we could come up with based on this little, uh, description here for this dragon creature. And so we're working on, uh, the dragon design based on these little pre, uh, thought out ideas about the design itself. Um, and this is actually for a, a 3D visual effects project that I'm working on with uh, a team that is a production house. So they are uh, creating a short film and I'm helping with the visual effects and uh, doing the dragon design for this. So uh, <clears throat> this was last week. Uh, and then after that, uh, we got into doing a little bit of a three quarters view, but didn't finish it up and just trying to figure out some details and some things we wanted to do. Uh, and then I went into my own sketchbook and decided to draw up some of my own designs. And I, I feel like working in the sketchbook is a little easier for me sometimes. So uh, if that's something that you guys like to do, uh, last night in the stream, we talked about how to take um, like an, a photo with your camera on your phone uh, of your sketchbook page and bring that into Photoshop and clean it up a little bit so that you can kind of transition into digital. Uh, so that is in last night's stream. And then from there, we went into uh, working up about six or so different designs. And uh, we were specifically trying to figure out solutions for the wings on our dragon. So uh, we, we came up with some, some things that are a little bit more bug-like. And this top row, you can see we've got variations of stacking wings, sort of like a dragonfly. We've got layers of wings, sort of rows here. We've got uh, more uh, lizard type um, you know, extensions from the neck out and things like that for the wings. And then we have a scorpion influence design and finally getting back down to more of a bird like uh, bat wing or something like that. And this one actually connects all the way down uh, the full length of the tail, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so after that, we decided to pick on a couple to work on and work up a little further. And we brought this to a final uh, draw up with about five of these designs. So uh, two of these are technically the same thing. The scorpion's kind of the same design here. Uh, so it's really four designs total. Uh, but we decided to pick the ones we thought were going to work the best and then uh, bring those up to a little bit more of a worked out level. You can see that we've shaded these in to kind of define the silhouette a little bit so that we can get a clear picture of if the designs are working from a distance. And we talked about that a whole lot last night. Uh, so definitely check that out if you missed it, because all of these live streams are recorded and you can find them on the YouTube channel that you're watching this on right now. Uh, okay, so I took this page to my guys this morning and we had a production meeting talking about directions for the overall design, what I might do tonight, because I told them, you know, I really want to be able to sit down tonight and draw up sort of a final design. Uh, and so I really kind of nailed them down and tried to get them to give me uh, their honest opinions about what they liked and what they didn't like. And so we uh, we were leaning more towards trying to keep this like a um, a dragon in the sense that we don't want to go too far into the bug arena because it's not going to feel very much like a dragon anymore. And we want to be able to still say that the, 
it's a dragon design, right? Uh, so how the, the real question is how far can we push that in this design without going over that edge and losing the audience into thinking that this is just some sort of crazy alien type uh, bug sort of thing. So uh, with that in mind, we had a big discussion and talked about the pros and cons of getting rid of the scorpion design. Uh, the pinchers are an awesome touch. I think that this as a creature design is very, very cool. Uh, and I think it could work as a creature, but not as a dragon probably. So we decided to kind of get rid of the scorpion direction just as a general direction for the dragon. And then uh, to go more towards the traditional wing uh, span with classical uh, wings on the dragon here and just kind of work on that. So then we ended up uh, landing on these final designs here. And let me kind of turn on all these sections here so you can show you what we are looking at here. Okay. So I, I gave them these three options to look at. We talked about the scorpion, not really something we could work with in this case. We talked about a multi-wing sort of bat configuration and you know whether or not we, we layer one extra pair of wings or six or however many. Uh, the idea was just, is it a good idea to stack these wings? And so we talked about functionality. Can these work if they're getting in the way of each other? How do we solve those problems when they're animating uh, and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, then we, we talked about the classic uh, direction, a little bit more like a bird in terms of the anatomy for the wing and things like that. And so after a lot of discussion, uh, for better or worse, we have landed on classic bird down here for the uh, theme of the wingspan and things like that. And so there's some good reasons for that. One, I think that the overall silhouettes, if you were just to blacken this all up right here, is very, very strong. Uh, when the dragon has all the little arms out in the middle of its torso and the wings fully spread out to the sides, it's very, very intimidating. And so that will make an amazing looking shot on a film. Uh, so whether we're talking about animating it or posing it for a still shot, it is going to look really, really good like this. And you can't really say that for every single one of these other designs. Uh, the scorpion looks pretty good, but again, for other reasons, we had to kind of abandon that direction uh, for this project. So. Um, we, we talked about how it would look when it was spread out to the sides with his wings. We also talked about what it might look like over here if the wings were tucked in behind. And the, again, pros and cons between how we need to have that animate, the sequence of uh, transformation from the wings out to tucked, and then whether or not the arms come out simultaneously or before or after. And I kind of explained it to them like we're thinking about doing that transition like you would see in a Transformers movie where the robot has a sequence of things that have to happen in order for everything to move appropriately. Because you have to remember these little bitty legs that are uh, centipede influenced are gonna be crisscrossing down across the body uh, over each other. And so they can't open except for one way, otherwise they would have to go through each other. So all of that has to kind of be thought out at this point because we're getting towards that final stage of design and uh, we need to kind of wrap up all of that reasoning and that thought process. So we're gonna start working on the bottom design here for tonight. All of these details are negotiable as far as the surface level stuff, as far as the basic implementation for um, bone structure, things like that. Um, but the overall silhouettes and the big features kind of need to stay locked in place at this point. And uh, so that's just kind of part of the process that we are in right now. So let's isolate uh, the bottom section here on a new layer. And in, to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna go ahead and blow this up so that we can start working from this. And uh, so that way we can spend a little bit more time on the details tonight. So I'm gonna go through my um, layers here and pick out the stuff that we need. I just want the line art right now. So let's grab this and the wings are still separated. So I'm gonna grab both of these layers, duplicate them combine, set them back to multiply, and let's pull these out on their own page here. So I'm gonna name this page six, seven actually. And let's turn off page six here. And I don't actually need both of these, so let's get rid of the alternate drawing over here. And 
let's go ahead and reposition our dragon in the middle. So you'll notice I still have something left over over here and I can't even see what it is at this point. But to get rid of that, what I'm gonna do is box select the middle section of the drawing and then put a um, layer mask on this. And then if I right click and apply this, now when I start to transform, it's only gonna lock into the areas that were in that mask that we isolated and applied. So I still have a little bit of extra stuff out here that's uh, really transparent and I can't see. So again, if we make a tighter mask and really dial this in, uh, we'll be able to just get the edges of the dragon where he needs to be. I'm sure that happened from when we were shading uh, earlier in the process. So let's apply that. Now you can see our bounding box is appropriately sized. So if I hold control while I'm moving this around, I can snap this to the middle of the canvas, hit enter to apply, and then let's scale this up. Okay. So uh, the basic process here, if you have watched any of the previous videos uh, on sort of a three quarters view, is gonna be that we're gonna kind of stay messy early on and kind of clean up as we go. And that way we are not worried too much about getting things perfect at first, but we're mainly concerned about working things up um, and over the entire dragon as a whole, uh, one large section at a time. And so uh, may not make a lot of sense right now, but I'm going to um, work on that and you will see what I mean. Okay. So I tried to convert this to a blue pencil layer, but because my action and this is uh, set to a multiply layer, it's not a normal layer. We need to kind of fix that. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, take this layer below. Uh, if we try to merge these and multiply on, it's still just gonna show through the white underneath. Uh, so we don't wanna do that. Uh, but what we could do is actually just fill the bottom layer with uh, the same color as we have on the background layer down here. And then once we do that, uh, so this is just a solid layer here. If we merge this, it will now be uh, one solid layer with a background. And now we can go ahead and try to do our conversion again. Okay, it's not liking that for some reason. Let's try to put it at the very top and see if this will work. Yeah, okay, it's not working. So my action, for whatever reason, is set up uh, kind of weird at this point uh, to work uh, that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo back to the point where this is not collapsed. So we just have this on a transparent layer. What I might do is select a color range and I wanna grab the white sections here and we can control how much of the white is pulled into the selection by the fuzziness factor here. So I'll turn that up to something like 50, hit okay. And then I'm gonna actually delete this away. So we're just left with the line drawing. So let's hit Alt and left click on the I, uh, icon over here so that we bring all of our other layers back. And now I'm gonna duplicate this and let's try this again with our convert. Okay, so there we got it working. It's a little gross and messy, but we will work with that. So I'm gonna set this to normal. And then let's turn our opacity down lower. And I just wanna keep kind of the details underlying on this drawing so I can see where we have a good starting point. Okay. So we're not gonna change the pose up too much, but we may wanna play with it a little bit as we go. And that's fine. So let's grab our paintbrush Make sure we get into our brushes here and select our sketching brush. And I'm gonna collapse all the stuff we don't need, get my tablet ready, and then let's jump in and start drawing. Okay. So let me know if you guys want to discuss anything as we get in here and draw. It's gonna be a pretty laid back evening as far as uh, things go. And before we get into sketching, I just wanted to kind of share with you guys what I'm looking at on the other screen. I've got a lot of reference up for individual parts. So if we had got into more of the scorpion stuff, uh, I have some reference prepped for that sort of thing. Obviously we've got more close-ups of like the centipede legs and things like that. Uh, dragon reference, skull reference, lizards, 
uh, different rip, reptilian sort of eyes, uh, things like that. And then, you know, um, yeah. So that's what I'm looking at on the other screen in case you guys are curious. And let's jump in. Okay. So move everything out of the way, get comfy, and then let's do this. warm up a little bit here. This is going to re require a little bit more of a steady hand than last night when we get in here to do the details. Uh, so I want to make sure we are kind of paying attention to what we're doing here. Okay. Um, let's start off with some three dimensional form sketching just to kind of get the overall shapes in here. And I like to do this to really kind of nail down the perspective and, and what I'm trying to work on here as we get going, because sometimes with thumbnail sketches, it can be a little hard to tell what angle things are at. And it's done um, to, to your advantage at the thumbnail stage that way so that you don't have to actually mock up all of these details. Now that we're getting into the detail stage, we want to take the time to really get in here and play with uh, what these details look like. And to do that, we need to fully understand what direction these shapes are facing. So we've got the underbelly facing towards us here where all these legs are sort of exposed off to the side. And it's basically just a big cylindrical tube all the way down the body of our dragon here. But it actually twists around vertically as we get up more towards the head. So the, the underbelly starts off uh, on the sides facing us. And then as we get up towards here, we're going to see it start to turn. And that line is going to draw in closer and closer as we get towards the head until finally the head comes over top and tucks in over what we're seeing. So let's start by loosely getting the sketch kind of back in place while we're doing our 3D forms. Going to try not to erase too much tonight until we need to uh, to save some time. But let's make sure we draw this line where it needs to be. So it comes across like this. OK, then it's off to the side. And then we're going to have layering. So the arms are going to come out of this more exoskeletal section on the side of the dragon. And then once we get towards the ground, the belly again is going to twist back and turn uh, to face downward as we get over to here. So I'm drawing the edge line so you can see how that's occurring. Tucks under down here. And if I get a little bit quiet tonight, uh, it's probably because I have to use a little bit more brain power uh, to do some of this stuff than normal. So um, bear with me if you hear me go quiet for a bit. Uh, wake me up in the chat or something, and I'll be sure to jump back in and <laughs> provide a little bit more commentary. Okay. So overall, the thumbnail like pretty much nailed the proportions, uh, I think, to where we were going to want to be. We may want to fix a little bit of the transition towards the bottom because when we get into here, it gets a little awkward with how small this is compared to this. So we may want to have some of this back side over here thicken up a little bit more before we get to the tail section back here. So we could stack that up a bit more like that. And rather than worrying about you know the arms or any of those other little details right now, I just want to get the main body kind of blocked in. Okay. So we talked a little bit about perspective in one of the previous, um, the previous live streams. So let's talk about where our horizon line would be in this case for our creature. And then let's talk about where some of the vanishing points might be for this. Uh, so as far as where we're looking at this dragon, 
from this perspective, we're pretty much at eye level with the dragon, as you can see here. So anything below this uh, horizon line is gonna be, we're looking down onto uh, those details and anything above the horizon line, we're looking up at those details. And so what I might do is just start another layer for the perspective and we can just kind of block in what we're looking at. So I'm gonna start right about here and we're gonna call this our horizon line. Vanishing points are gonna be a little bit more tricky on an object like this because we are uh, having a lot of things twist and turn on us. And so having those go off and in the distance to a vanishing point is not gonna be as advantageous for us. And typically for object design, you're gonna want a more, a longer focal length uh, for the way that you would shoot this with a camera. So you're not gonna have a lot of uh, you know, if a vanishing point was here, you're not going to have a lot of really wide angle um, convergence like this for vanishing points uh, for anything that's industrial design, except for maybe large locations. You're On objects like this, you're going to want to uh, have these parallel lines defined in such a way that you kind of know back in here is where these, these are headed off to. And it may be way off the page as far as the vanishing point is. And then for the rest of this, you're gonna have uh, fairly uh, simple verticals. So as far as this object goes, we may be at a distance looking at this thing uh, with a telescope or a long lens. And so you're not gonna see the verticals converge like you would with a giant, uh, you know, three-story building or something like that. You're gonna see a lot more parallel verticals uh, so that it's easier to draw and it's also easier to understand the form that you're looking at. Uh, so not a lot of complex perspective happening here. Okay, so let's get in here and start working up some of the details on the head. So I don't think we're gonna need to spend too much time actually worrying too much about the perspective. I'm gonna merge this actually. Now I'll just start kind of erasing as we go. So the main thing to think about here are the big shapes so that you can nail the symmetry. Because I think one of the hardest things to do when you're first learning perspective uh, is to try to get an object that is uh, symmetrical in perspective down. And uh, it's not always easy. So what I'm also gonna do probably is pull up this other sketch and then shrink it down so we can have it to look at as well. So let's pull up page six here. I'm gonna copy this. And let's pull this into page seven. Okay. So now I'm gonna have this sort of floating up in here just so that we have something to look at. Drop this behind all of our other layers. Okay. So I'm gonna reference the head over here and see where the implied details are so that we can start mapping in the details for the eyes and stuff like that. So it looks like we've got a little bit of a, maybe a cranial ridge in here somewhere. And I'm gonna kind of emphasize that a little bit by creating some of these protrusions that have got a little bit harder of an edge. And let's play with how we're gonna get the eyes in here in a way that seems pretty terrifying. So the shape's gonna change a little bit as the perspective shifts from one side to the other. We have to remember we're seeing more of this side than we are of this side. And so if this is a box, we are looking at it from this perspective here. And actually what we're looking at is from more like this perspective here. Uh, so not down onto this as much as straight on, uh, but we are definitely looking at this side more than this side. So, we want to kind of look at our eyes and we've already spent quite a bit of time uh, sketching some of these eyes up. 
So let's go back to one of our other sketches down here. I'm gonna see some of the heads that I drew up before. So let's go ahead and grab all of the relevant stuff now. And once again, we'll pull this up to the other layer since we're working on the head right now. So I'm just gonna copy that. There we go. This is what's great about working in Photoshop. You can be as messy as you wanna be. And again, you can just get rid of it when you don't need it anymore. Okay, so make sure you're on the right layer. Now let's take a look at some of these uh, successful sketches from before and try to use those to drive what we're doing now. So anything that's more snake-like, like these, are a little bit more like what we're going for. And uh, what I wanna do is make sure that I'm nailing that scary factor. Okay, so let's just pick one of these to kind of go for right now. And I think this one is probably the winner for me as far as scary. Uh, so I'm gonna come right off this edge here down and we're gonna get these lines in on the side. Pull this down like this. And all we have to do is mirror this over and back over to the other side. So we're gonna follow this parallel line across correct as we go. Just like that. We got some uh, slots here for the nostrils. We'll put those in. Okay, now I want to move more towards what this eye is doing down here uh, as far as getting this blocked in. So if I wanted to, I could just copy this and paste it into place. But I think I want to kind of further define what this needs to look like as we go. So I'm gonna do a little bit more work on the eyebrows here. Uh, and of course, they're not actually eyebrows. It's just what I would call the shape. Uh, and then we need to kind of decide on the pupil. So if we do like a vertical slit like this, it's a bit more snake-like, which I kind of like. The smaller and the more slanted you can make this eye. And we talked last night about um, triangles. And um, we talked about how your antagonist would probably be more angular in nature and your protagonist would be a little bit more uh, round. And so the more sharp edges you can give something that's dangerous like this, the more dangerous it feels to the viewer. And Again, that's how you start training people without having to just tell them um, in a movie or something like that, that what they're looking at is supposed to be dangerous. Is They know certain basic shapes are supposed to be off limits and kind of, you know, don't touch sharp objects, don't put your hands on a hot stove, all that kind of stuff. So people will intuitively know we need to watch out for this guy. So Lorian is in the chat and she's asking, please tell us about the blue line. So the blue line is uh, referring to a traditional technique, which is a blue pencil, um, a blue photo pencil. And basically the idea back in the day was that you would draw when you animated, um, you would get your layout in place in blue pencil and designers still use this today. Um, but you, you would rough in something in blue pencil that was really light. And then when you went to photocopy it, your blue pencil, because the photocopier was so bad at replicating those lines, because uh, the contrast wasn't there, that it would actually just disappear. And so if you had one piece of paper that you did your blue pencil on, and on that same piece of paper, if you went back in and you, you did ink on top of it, the only thing that would actually photocopy is the ink lines. So that's how a lot of comic book artists um, kind of still work, is they will, uh, you know, 
take the same piece of paper and it allows them to get a rough in there without making a lot of mistakes as they are going. Okay, so it looks like he's got some ears or some horns or something here, which is kind of an interesting shape. We've got some more angular things coming off of this jawline down here. This is where we get to play with all of our, our little things and see what is going to work. So. Tonight, I will not be moving on until we have made some solid decisions about what this guy is going to look like. Okay, so zoom back every now and then and take a look at what you're doing. It's easy to zoom in too far and then stay at that distance and you start really uh, losing sight of the big picture. So occasionally reframe your reference point as you're drawing and make sure that you like what you're seeing. So what I don't like right now is the size of the eyes. I think we're looking at something that's a little bit crazy uh, cute. <laughs> that's not what I want. Uh, so how we're gonna fix that is, first I'm gonna up the resolution. So we've been drawing at screen resolution, 1920 by 1080 at 72 uh, dots per inch. And that is your typical monitor resolution for full HD. So what I want to do now is I want to actually up-res this to something like two or 300. So we're looking at a pretty big uh, image here, 8,000 by 4,500 pixels, but that is going to give me a whole lot more detail when I zoom in to work with. So now we are at, we are at 100% zoomed here. You're going to notice things get a little bit more blurry uh, until you start actually drawing again on the canvas, and that's because it's had to scale that information up and to compensate for the pixels that weren't there. So what I'm actually going to do at this point is to erase a little bit here. And now that we have some more of that to work with, using the same uh, brush size here, you can see we can get a lot more detail just by looking at that line right there. It's a lot cleaner. So let's go back and take a look at our head again and try to get this in a better place. So let's do big block in first. We know right about here we are going to want the eyes coming in. I really want these angled down in such a way that they are kind of scary to look at. So I'm going to create a little bit of the tear duct kind of details there. I haven't really talked about whether or not this guy is going to have a lot of scales yet. Uh, or the way that's going to look on the surface, but we need to kind of get into that as well. So if we can avoid a tons of those surface details tonight, I'm going to try because I think we can um, get a lot of information in the line art without actually having to surface texture the entire thing up. But I want to have enough there to imply the details so that if people are asking, we kind of know what direction we're headed. Okay. Oh, okay, Lorian in the chat is saying that a diamond-shaped head indicates poisonous glands. So that is interesting. Did not know that. Okay, so we're gonna work a little bit on this first eye, see if we can get this into place. And looking scary. So I probably want to pull up some more reference for these eyes just to make sure that I'm kind of doing something that is in line with what is realistic. Uh, for the most part, it looks like we're still going to have some sort of bulbous, uh, you know, spherical shape. And then you're going to have a pupil and there's a, depends on the animal. Some of them have irises that are kind of undefined, a little bit less so than a human. Uh, and some of them have um, no iris, at least not one that would look the same as ours. So, OK. 
Shot. So, doing this all over the entire thing is, is one of those things that can really kind of get you in trouble. So rather than spending all that time like we just did on the eye everywhere else, right now I'm going to remind myself that we're still sketching, you know, we're going to clean this up, but we need to get through uh, and as quickly as possible try to block this whole thing in. So let's remember that as we get in here and try not to slow ourselves down uh, needlessly. worked for all the designs up until this point and it will work for us now if we stay fast and loose. Be plenty of time to slow down and worry about these edges and details and making them look clean once we have a good looking silhouette and design is in place and all of that stuff. And even at this stage, I'm playing around with shapes to see if I can get something working uh, at every level. So uh, if it doesn't work, I can always erase it, start over and try something else. But the more you play around and are afraid to experiment, the more interesting your designs are gonna become. So try something a little bit different like this. Not even really sure what all of this is yet. Let's just get some of this in here. Occasionally you'll see me making lines that run contrary uh, to a form and with a little bit of curvature like this you can actually define three dimensional um, layering underneath and how these lines kind of go through here. Shows a little bit of the curvature without actually having to shade anything which is kind of cool. So once again, looking at this side, how am I gonna mirror this? Bearing in mind, it's gonna angle away a little quicker for us on this side and down. Got less of the face showing here. We wanna come down straight with a vertical from this eye and make sure that the same thing is happening from one side to the other. And of course, the curvature is gonna be inverted for these details.
Okay. So Lorian's saying try bringing the nose down into a bit of a beak. Sharper than that, I'm not sure. So the other challenge is gonna be maintaining proper proportions as we get going in here, and we don't want to get this going uh, in a way that's too fat uh, with the shape. And this is why you start large and then kind of work your way back in here. So what I'm gonna do is, is fatten this brush up a little bit and then we are gonna pull back and speed up a little bit because I think that we are gonna run the risk of getting a little too detailed too early here. Okay, so don't be afraid if you see this headed in a direction that isn't gonna work to erase and kind of give it a second go here. All right, so pull this up kind of like this. Really want to make sure this is sort of skinny on the way in and then tapers in towards the front here. Not sure if those fangs sticking out are really gonna work, but we can give that a shot. Okay, so at this distance, it's a little easier to tell what big shapes need to be there before you can take off on those details on the inside. And I don't like that, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so the head needs to angle back a little bit more. They come up with some interesting shapes here for how to get this dialed back in. Something like that might do it. A little bit more round on the outside. So as my perspective gets off, you'll see me making little lines as we go to try to straighten that up a little bit. And that was just so I could mirror this curve over to the other side. Uh, Lauren saying since the head is closest to us, perhaps it should be a little bigger. Possibly. Um, I think what we're we're not going to go for here is tons of perspective in the way that you would have it with an actual camera, um, you know, looking up the at the dragon when you're in the final shot. Um, you have to remember since we're doing product design or creature design, uh, we want to show off the whole thing from a very orthographic perspective. Uh, so uh, at this point, we may keep the head like this, and then if we still think it needs to be bigger later, we can always scale it up at this resolution. Okay. So I still like these little hooks or curves coming off the side. And what's interesting about this little design right now is that it's kind of reminding me of a wolf a little bit. I think it's because of these little ears. Uh, so with the horns added, it'll probably look a little different, but this is kind of interesting the way this is curving and bending here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of some surface detailing here. Just remind myself I need to come back in and lock that out. Okay. Not sure if we'll keep those horns uh, on the front or not, but right now they're there. Okay. 
if it gets too much like a beak, it's gonna look bird-like, and I really don't want that, so. Let's keep it kind of rounded off for now. These shapes for this, uh, this thing on the side, they're kind of competing for attention, so I want to get rid of some of that. Okay. All right, so same thing over here. We got some horns or something happening. sure yet about this section. I mean, horns have kind of been done to death, so any chance we get to do something a little different would be, be a better direction in my opinion. So I'm not really sure what I want to do yet here. You guys are seeing the process live and unedited. Okay, let's zoom out a little more. Check out some of these other designs real fast, see if there's anything I can use. Uh, I kind of like this here. I think these are a little bit more concave in the way that they're dipping in. And that actually might be a little bit more interesting than just doing spikes. So these are more, uh, Kind of doing this. You've got some lines running down the middle and splitting and all that sort of stuff. So again, you can see by the curvature here, we are helping to kind of define the bumpiness of the head and what's going on. Lorian says, perhaps plates like a stegosaurus. So yeah, we can try that. I don't really know yet. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come back to the head at a little bit of a later point in the evening and see what we can do with it. Right now, I wanna move on and get the rest of the body kind of in place. So I'm gonna zoom out a little more. Let's raise our size up a little bit. And let's start drawing some of this in. Okay. So pull up some of these spiky things and then I'm gonna look at some of the reference over here for how these actually look on some of these dragon or lizard type animals because um, you know these were grounded in reality when they were first started to be brought into these designs. And uh, if you actually look at these lizards that have these spikes, it's kind of terrifying just the way that these look on the surface of the skin. So I'm pulling straight off of reference for these little spikes and uh, they're, I'm calling them spikes. They're really, they're like horns or, uh, but they're like all over these creatures and uh, a little scary. So they're basically just cone shapes, um, nothing real complicated other than drawing these kind of pointed different directions of perspective, but uh, yeah. Okay. So we're going to come up and decide underneath kind of what needs to happen with this dragon. So I'm looking at all of this stuff. Again, this is our master. We're going off of our master thumbnail there. Okay, so first of all, we know that we need to have the side of our little dragon body turning. 
So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start erasing as I go down the body so that we have a clean slate to work with. But I, I'm going to keep in mind what I was drawing before. And that'll just help me know where I'm at for cleanup. Okay, so the arms aren't going to start till down here somewhere. And this is where the joints are going to start popping up down there. But until then, I'm going to make this a little fatter as we go down. Some of this, as far as the body is concerned, is going to look a little skinnier. And the plates will round this out in terms of the thickness. Okay, so it's pretty much facing. a three quarters turn to the to the left. And underneath the body, we could do a row of spikes, just sort of an alligator wrap for the underside of the body. I know for the outside, we want to do a little bit more of a plating type situation, uh, sort of like a dinosaur or just some sort of exoskeleton. Okay, so let's, let's try something a little bit more interesting with the neck here. So we've got lots of things we could do and what would be cool is if we could kind of get some of this musculature pouring off of the body and down into the side here. So kind of show the separation a little bit in the way that this is coming in, at least on the underside. Then when we get to the top side up here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of stop doing that and there's going to be an outer shell. But underneath, we're going to end up seeing a lot more of this type of stuff. So let's erase out and draw back in. So might have a little bit of spiky layers or something down here around the neck, sort of like a choker or something like that. Zoom in some more to do this up. Turn up our smoothing a little bit. Okay, so coming off the neck here, I want to show some of these little like muscular sinews. And I'm going to indicate that using some of these curved cylindrical shapes. So these are going to merge down into the rest of the body almost like little snakes coming up out of the neck exposed and then back into the head. So that'll be even more kind of creepy. And we need to decide how that's going to all connect up. So I'm not sure yet. But then down here, we want some sort of layer to kind of separate that back out. So like I said, we might have some spikes or just some plates or something that differentiate the way this looks.
So you can imagine this being like a layer of protection in case somebody went after uh, one of these muscular areas in his neck, thinking that they could chop it off or something. Uh, he's got these spiky extrusions that prevent someone from getting too close to him. And then in here, this is all sort of muscular tendons and stuff that wraps around the neck. Just like that, so we get to the shell that is the neck or the head. later. This definitely needs to be following a little bit better symmetrical line down like here. So we have a line here, it would mirror over here. So this is more like what we would get in reality. Uh, Lauren says, what if you made the neck behind the head arch up much higher so the neck is quite a bit longer? Yeah, we could do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the issue, again, is going to be we are kind of locked in the way the details need to look right now. And even if it animates a little bit higher uh, in the way that it works, we need to kind of stick to the original design. Um, at this point, because if we start making tons of changes as we go, it's going to be on big things like that. It's going to be harder to get this finished. So let's uh, let's kind of lock in at this point for what we're doing and decide what we want to change on the little stuff. Okay. So this actually goes all the way around the neck, but we're not going to see that because it's going to be twisted sort of away from us and hidden behind the rest of his sort of head spikes and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I still don't really know what I want to do back here. I'll figure it out as I go, but... I don't know if I want maybe the head to continue. All the way back or something. That could be kind of creepy. It's kind of interesting. It gives him a little bit of a crown or something on his head. It implies that he's maybe a king.
Okay. Let's see. Possibly work with that. So one of the other things I thought about today, which would be, again, really creepy, is if we had another way for it to animate and extend um, parts of its body. And I was thinking specifically about the separation from the top of where the head and the neck is to the rest of the body here and the arms where those start. So the way this would maybe work is if we can figure out a way to separate the joints for the wings uh, to where they start actually in the middle of the back and then come up off the sides, then above that we could have a separation. This is pretty gross, but we could have a separation here that uh, would allow the um, upper section to kind of move in and out of the lower section and it would essentially allow him to adapt different defensive postures um, like a turtle. Uh, at least that would be the mechanics of it. And it would allow him to kind of grow and shrink, uh, which again, would be a very terrifying thing to see if you were in front of this thing. So again, we'll have to play with whether or not this works as we get into the thing tonight, but that is essentially the idea. Okay, so we're gonna speed up a little bit and let's draw some of the rest of the stuff here. So one of the things I really wanna start nailing down is the anatomy for the arms and the wings. So I'm gonna pull up some bigger reference for the centipede legs. and let us play a little bit more with some of that stuff. I'm gonna leave this open right now so we can kind of discuss how this forms back up, but uh, maybe doing some further breakup like this would be creepy and, I don't know, interesting at the very least. Okay, so the wings are gonna start up here at least in the silhouette, and they're actually gonna connect back down onto uh, parallel structures in the back of the, uh, the, the spine. But let's draw the centipede legs. And so looks like the, uh, they're basically just cylinders that are gonna be stacked with um, you know, joints in between. So if we're down here looking at the first one and how it starts, we can draw through a little bit and extend out the way the cylinder would connect. From here, you're also gonna have a little bit of a sort of a ray, upraised tissue that surrounds the base where it connects to the body, gives a little bit more flexibility and things like that. And then here you're gonna have the joint, which is gonna get a bit of a smaller section on the inside of that connected down to the next part. So here we're gonna have this, and these are all straight uh, sections. Then each one of these consecutively has a smaller and smaller piece uh, in terms of the diameter coming out of it until you get to the end of it here. Now, something we're gonna do a little differently on our versions is that we are going to adapt the tips to be a little bit more claw-like uh, so that there is um, a bit more of a taper and curvature to these. And that is gonna be a little different from the original reference. 
and we need to decide how detailed we want to make these at this point. So it's a little weird. Let's start these diameters off a little thicker than that. And also have to remember the posing needs to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna pull these off like this a little bit more. And if we curve these a little bit, it's not gonna matter in our case. Okay, so we're gonna have a bit of a round section and then I just wanna have a pretty solid sharp claw coming out of this. Like that. Okay, and anything that you draw on the inside, just go ahead and erase and you're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna need to repeat that all the way down and I will come back to that once we get one blocked in on the other side. And to do this, we just draw a straight line to figure out where this would need to start on the other arm. Make sure it's about the same size and then draw from here. Now, as they come in and out, you're gonna have a tiny bit of foreshortening that happens. Uh, so pay attention to that a little bit, but it's not gonna happen tons. So just wanna be cautious of how you're shaping these. I'm not really sure functionally, other than you know digging into the sand and getting around what these would be used for, maybe grounding them in a fight, uh, that could be possible. Um, I don't really know, we haven't discussed that yet, but there's probably a lot of possibilities for what we could do with this. Okay, so. Anything on the inside here, let's get rid of. Make sure that we have this all drawn behind. Okay, so let's finish out the rest of the body and then we'll come back and do the wings. And we wanna draw like the arms aren't even here at this point because we want to be able to come back and um, kind of erase as we go. So what I'm gonna do now is turn the smoothing up a little bit more so I can get some really smooth lines. And let's get rid of this, whatever that is. Okay. these down. Okay, so at some point, this is gonna contact the ground, and after that, we need to kind of be cautious about how we are curving this and shaping it, because right about here, it starts to touch the ground, and it's gonna flatten out a little bit. So any chance you get with something like this to have some of those overlapping lines, 
definitely take advantage of it because it will make it feel a bit more natural. So as I curve around, it's gonna come up and disconnect from the side, and we're gonna have an overlap pulling around this way. Something like that. It's a little bit sharp, that fall off, so let's curve this in a little bit more gingerly. All right, so other than right here at the bottom, I think this is good. So right here, I want to go straighter and then up. And that, that hook right there lets us know where that ground contact is right there at the bottom, because it looks like it's sitting on the sand right there. Okay, so Lauren is saying she wants to see the topmost legs raised higher and be more threatening. Let's see what time it is. All right, we got about 45 minutes, so possibly we can do that right now. Let's grab our lasso tool. And our arm. Grab our transform, put it at the first joint here, and let's play with what this looks like. Something like that, maybe. Do the same thing on this side. Try to keep that other line in place without covering that up. And we'll put this back where the joint needs to be, somewhere right around there. And we'll bring this up. Now, we're gonna have an issue with this going through the face. Uh, and so again, we need to keep our silhouette in mind. Uh, we want to possibly bring up the back section a little more. So I'm gonna do that first uh, after I change some of the sections here. that a bit more of a curvature and let's grab Okay, so it's a bit more in line with the way this angle would be here. Uh, and so we are also talking about going a little longer in the chat with these. So let's zoom out with one of these and play with this and see if that's gonna be what we need to do. Let's pull out. So these are down to here. If we angle this up, we need to come out to about there. So let's start by taking our smoothing back down. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this. So again, we talked about this a little bit in the first night that we were designing the dragon, uh, or talking about designing the dragon, but we need to make sure that whatever we do with these links for the arms are not gonna be so long that they can't wrap and tuck without um, kind of overextending and making it unworkable. Because again, we're gonna be using this 
this view here to help draw uh, the model sheet for tomorrow night and it needs to be accurate proportionally so that this actually works in animation. Uh, so let's get rid of that. Not quite sure if I'm liking how this is all stacking up right now. Kind of like the way that this ducks in a little bit more and joins the body like that. This line seems to be softer on the inside. More like that. Then you'd have an underside that sort of comes down the middle and connects like that. Okay, so again, if we want to play with the pose, it's super easy. Just make sure you select the joint and that's where you rotate. Uh, so tomorrow night, uh, I've got a question in the chat about the model sheets for tomorrow night. Uh, model sheets are basically where we take all the concept art that we've done so far on the dragon creature and we are going to create a special uh, mock-up in Photoshop that is for bringing this into uh, Blender for 3D modeling uh, or sculpting or whatever. And it's specifically used for getting the proportions and everything lined up and makes it easier to model uh, because you've got a front view and a side view sort of lined up parallel to each other the way you would see somebody in a police lineup if they had their mugshot taken. Uh, and you've got measurements and distances outlined for um, you know, again, scaling purposes in 3D so that you don't have to guess what the proportions are like when you're trying to model. You can just bring this in, set your front view up, set your side view up, and then with both of those windows open simultaneously, you're able to lock down the proportions quickly and then get into details. Uh, so that's what a model sheet does, and it's something that uh, I think most artists want to have when they're creating 3D models, especially if something complex like characters or creatures, but unless they know how to make them themselves, they're hard to come by unless you're working in a big company. So um, it's gonna be something that I think is very useful to pick up and learn. And I'm hoping that everybody gets a lot out of that tomorrow night for the stream. Because it is not something that is super easy to do right off the bat. Gonna take a little bit of practice, uh, but it is a useful, uh, it's useful skill. Okay, so these are looking a little bit anemic in the way that the arms are shaped right now. Uh, so we're gonna fatten these up a little bit, and I'm gonna do a little bit of tapering to the front and to the back. So we're gonna get fatter on the edges, thinner in the middle, and then fat again on the on the tips. And that's gonna help me kind of get a little bit more interesting shape going on here. So you can kind of think of these as like bone shapes in the way that that's working. But it also kind of hints that there's some musculature going on there. Uh, and that's gonna be helpful for, again, animation. So Lauren's asking, when we create the model sheet, will we have the dragon stretched out? And yes, that is gonna be a key um, thing to get locked in and correct, is how you set up the pose when you are creating the model sheet. And with humans, it's pretty easy. Typically you have what's called a T-pose, where uh, you've got a human straight out with their arms to the side, and they're standing with their legs, you know, shoulder width apart. Um, and that just makes it easy to rig and animate. But with something like this, you're gonna have to think through the anatomy a little more and figure out how you're gonna have to stretch out everything in a way that's natural to, it's natural in a sense that you would physically be able to pose the dragon that way. Um, but it makes it the easiest position to rig it in. And then obviously from there, you have to be able to get it back to a position that's the default pose and, and all of that. So. A uh, little bit of thought needs to go into that to get that right. So again, we're getting a little bit more muscular with the way these look. I kind of like that a little better. Uh, we don't want to go super overboard with that. So I think it takes away of some of the, the um, you know, I'm trying to say insect-like qualities of the arms. If we go a little bit too, 
too rugged and muscular, but it definitely makes it feel a little bit more flushed out. So if we come too far in off of the edge of the silhouette, it's gonna feel like the arm starts in the middle and I don't want that, I want it to start back here. So furthest in me to go is kind of there with whatever sinews or anything like that is connected to the body. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a little better. Claw may be getting a little too large at this point. So we don't want these to be, you know, pinchers or giant, you know, things on the end. We just want them to be pointy and a little scary in the sense that you don't want this thing stabbing you. And a lot of this can come down to how it's shaped. So if you get a good interesting kind of feel to that. I think that's good and creepy. So let's keep it like simple like that. All right, um, I'm not gonna worry too much about the arms and the rest of the body right now. Let's get the wings in and then we'll come back and do a second pass. Okay, so for the wings, Again, we're gonna want the anatomy to be sort of in the middle of the back like this. You're gonna have top and bottom connections that sort of wind down and connect on the back. And the wings are gonna come off of that. And so from here, you're gonna have some bigger <clears throat> type of joints that maybe uh, aid in the, the big movement of the wings and come in like this uh, Lauren saying if the neck can telescope perhaps the uh, legs can telescope too um, possibly I don't know if I'm a huge fan of switching up that design at this point in time so we had already kind of locked in the way that's working um, Again, the neck telescoping thing is like, maybe that'll work. I'm not really sure if that's gonna do it uh, in a way that's gonna be helpful because we hadn't really discussed that with the team yet. So for now, I'm gonna say that we just go ahead and get rid of that idea uh, because I don't want to kind of surprise them at this point with something that we didn't talk about. Okay, so same basic idea as before with the wings. Maybe about here is where we have that joint. Okay, so for these sections, for the joints, I'm just gonna do sort of a round shape and in the middle, we're gonna have uh, sort of these parallel lines that would indicate a ridge uh, coming through that. I am gonna go ahead and continue the spiky structures on the end of these. And around that, we're gonna have, <coughs> excuse me, uh, some folds of skin that sort of surround the spike and keep those um, sort of grounded to the wing itself. And that way it feels like the spike is actually growing out of, or the, the whatever this is, a claw or something, is actually growing out of the wing here. So we want to plan for that and then have that overlap everything else. Okay, I'll come over here, do the same thing. Okay. 
Okay. This is a little hard to draw in the angle that I'm at right now. So I'm going to skew the page, turn it like this. And then once I'm at a, a comfortable position for this uh, horizontal line, I can go ahead and practice a couple of times on my pen and then feel comfortable drawing that over. And you don't want to do this to get your lines drawn because they're going to end up looking terrible like that. So if you can practice and get down to where you're drawing really smooth lines that are straight and parallel and all that sort of stuff, you're going to be a much better looking um, sketch artist. Okay, and the ends of these are going to have the same basic thing with the claws, but we need to play a little bit with how they are attaching to the rest of the design over here. So, Let's get rid of the horizon line at this point because we kind of established our perspective already. And let's draw the rest of this stuff in. So the same basic thing is going to happen from front to back here. Um, we need to kind of decide how we're going to connect all of these sinews up and everything. Um, but we can kind of do that a little bit as we go here. These are going to be more uh, like hard cartilage or bones um, in the wings here uh, on the top ridge. And then on the middle, you're going to have some more um, flexible areas that allow maybe blood to flow through these um, since it's organic material. And so you're going to have skinnier vein like things happening there. And Again, we're going to want some, some of those spikes coming out of the end here. Uh, Lauren's asking if my concept specifies that the wings would accordion fold. Uh, and so, yes, we've kind of gone back and forth, um, but I think at this point we're looking more like what a bat would do uh, with the way that these are kind of working. Um, so yeah, we need to kind of think that through as we go here, because that's a good point. Uh, I think this section would come back this way and end up here. And then from there, you would have the next section out like this, swing back until you're here. And then again, this would swing back. So you're like this. So let me know if that makes sense or if we're kind of going to need to swap this around a little bit.
Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Warren's talking about how the bat folds its wings around its body and how that might not work in our case. And I think she could be correct. Um, I definitely, you know, I want them to come out and flare up and then be able to kind of tuck behind. Or like an eagle would tuck. Um, so we can kind of discuss how we need to make that work, but. Okay, so at this point, let us turn off our underdrawing, kind of see where we're at. It's not looking bad. Um, still a lot of work left to do to kind of get it to a finished point, but uh, kind of what I wanted to show you guys tonight was just how we're gonna go about doing that. So we got about 30 minutes left, I'm gonna continue working, um, but just wanted to give you guys an idea of how we could zoom in on one level and get that area worked up. If there's anything you want me to do specifically before we wrap up tonight, let me know uh, as far as the details go. And otherwise, the next time you see me, I'll have this all finished up and kind of shade it a little bit. It's really just tedious at this point. You get in here once the design is finished and you take your time and make your lines look pretty and all of that. Lauren says, it would look pretty scary if the dragon came up out of the sand, looking all slick and skinny, and then the wings start opening, and then the legs start opening. Yeah, uh, it would. We talked about that. Uh, a lot of ideas for how we're gonna do the big reveal on this thing. And uh, no matter what we do, it's gonna be, it's gonna be creepy. But I think it's gonna look cool. So. Still not super happy with the head. I'll probably come back in and work on that a little bit more uh, to kind of polish that up. At this point, what I want to do is block in that other wing. So I'm going to get rid of uh, this other stuff over here. I'm just making up details as I go. Nothing here is uh, really grounded in 100% <laughs> anatomy or any of that stuff. So definitely look up your own reference and make sure you're following something to kind of ground this in some form of reality. The more you pay attention to that kind of stuff, the more convincing your original designs are going to be because somebody will have seen that in nature and it will just tend to kind of work better that way. Okay. So we talked a little bit last night about not doing this, but we have some tangents uh, or opportunities for tangents to happen as we're painting here. 
And one of them we already did here without intentionally doing it, which is uh, having this claw uh, come off right at the end of this joint. And these are in different areas in space, right? The, the claw is part of the wing, so it's behind this arm. And that's not gonna be obvious from the line drawing anymore because it looks like they could be part of the same object. So we wanna fix this if we can. So the way to do that is to reposition something so that tangent kind of goes away. So if we instead bring this part of the wing up a little higher and have the claw start earlier up here, then that tip is only gonna come out like that, which makes it a little easier to explain away what's going on here. We can do that with a heavier line like that for the arm. That implies that it's in front of whatever is behind there. Um, that's a, another good trick. Anything that's further off in the distance, you wanna draw with a little bit lighter line most of the time. And uh, anything that's in the foreground that overlaps, you'd want to draw with a heavier line like this to imply that it's in front. And that's just basic cartooning sort of <laughs> techniques that have been brought over to illustration, but it works when you want to fake something in a line form uh, to give it the emphasis that it's in front of something else. Also, Going back and outlining uh, your entire object on the page, if you're sketching, can do a wonders to make it really pop and stand out. Uh, so anything on the inside of your drawing, make the lines really light and don't bold those up too much. But if it's everything on the outside, uh, you know, put a big thick outline on it. And you'd be surprised what that does just to kind of increase the effectiveness of your line quality when you're, when you're sketching. And that goes for, you know, obviously in Photoshop or on paper. So, if you guys are watching the stream tonight and you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, be sure to duck in before the session is over tonight and subscribe. Um, I have over 250 hours, I believe, at this point of live stream content on the channel. This is live stream number 29 so far, and there's quite a few things in there about Blender. So this is a little bit of an odd week, but typically we talk about 3D stuff. And so if you guys are interested in that, definitely stop on by the channel and check out those past live streams. All of those are recorded for you. And, um, I'm going to be coming back tomorrow night at the same time, 7 p.m., and I will be finishing up this design. So when I get into the office tomorrow, that's what I'll be working on, is sketching the rest of this up. Okay, so we got all the big pieces blocked in now. Kind of see what that's looking like there. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of this junk that we don't need. And so anything specific you guys want to see me detail up or you want me to just keep going, let me know. Might rework the head a little bit so we get that in a better place. It's kind of looking like a little bit like a mole uh, head right now. I'm not, I'm not super thrilled about that. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up some other reference so I have some good things to look at for the face here. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is start to work on sort of the anatomy of the head and try to figure out some more of these shapes so that we're 
at least left with a finished head tonight. All right, so let's uh, let's play with the eyes a little bit. Get these in. It's getting a little bit more European in the way that it's styled up here. Not sure if I'm a fan. All 
Okay, so this is a point where if I get too bogged down in the details on something, I always go back and look for more reference. So let's pull up some art stations uh, or some Pinterest stuff and take a look at some snake heads. Okay, so silhouettes are a good thing to kind of identify what needs to look like. This is a good of an eye, and this is good with the teeth. We could show that. It's a good profile view there. And what we're looking for mostly is what kind of shapes do we need to put into the, the way the eyes are shaped as well as the overall curvature of the head to give it that snake-like look. Um, because lizards are kind of the same way, but snakes are obviously a little bit more intimidating in the way that the eyes and the, the heads are shaped. So anything that we can do that kind of hones in on that scary factor, that's what I want to lock in on. So maybe enough to get started. Okay. So we've got the eyes are pretty close to the front of the head here. We can see nose is pretty much on the front of the, uh, the tip here. And so we've got a little bit of a ring of these scales that are surrounding and raised off the surface of the head. And also, you know, the whole surface of the snake is made up of these scales. So we're not going to have any just skin kind of hanging out here. This is all going to be um, scales on the surface, which if we're going to try to replicate that look for the dragon, needs to kind of mimic that a little bit. So. All right. So with that in mind, I'm going to keep these up on the side and I'm going to go back to drawing. Okay, so the nose, if it's going to be sort of facing us and down, shaped like this, we're going to have a bit of a front section here that flattens off, and then it's going to come up behind and then come up towards the middle like this. And back down. So this is sort of the 3D curvature of the... head here. Again, some of this is getting defined as we draw this, as far as how this is shaped, but for the most part, that's consistent right there. Okay, so based on where we are now, maybe the eyes need to go sort of in this quadrant on both sides, be angled back this way. I want the dragon eyes to have a little bit more of a slant than some of these snake eyes do. Uh, the snake eyes have the, the sort of vertical pupil in the middle, but they're very round. Uh, in terms of the shape on the outside, they're a lot like a human eye would be. So these are a lot more slanted than your typical snake eye would be. Uh, so let's try it the other way. Instead, you'd have a ridge coming up and around. And you'd have a giant dip and the circular shape is at an angle to us as we're facing it, so it would be a bit more like this. And then, of course, around it, you would have the lip that has scales and all that sort of stuff coming off. A bit more like this. Let's 
get rid of this one over here. Maybe try the same thing. Let's see what that looks like. So looking down the side of the face, we're gonna see the edge of the eye pop out from the head as a round shape. You see the pupil there, and there we go. Okay, so this is more like what a snake would look like. It's a little weird looking. I uh, can't really put my finger on what's making that feel off. I think it's because they're too far towards the center of the head. So we would actually have these sort of coming off more to the side over here. And forward. These were actually a lot closer up to here on the the reference that I'm seeing. That opens into the nose, uh, the nasal cavity here on both sides. And so far we've kind of sketched this with the mouth closed, but we could talk about kind of going the other way and having the mouth open up a little bit it would be interesting. So if that was the case, the mouth would come out to about here. Fangs, if they were there, would be further in. So you'd see the tips of them sort of hanging down like this. And then the bottom of the jaw would open up very wide and come way further down like this. So I'm not really sure that's what we want to do, but it's a possibility. Okay. Let's keep playing a little bit and see what we can come up with. So once again, I'm gonna draw the center line this time, coming down to about here. Let's go for a little bit more of a pointed section. Nostrils coming off of that. And then that's where we would have the eyes sort of there. Definitely looks a little bit more intimidating.
Okay, this would have come around and something like this. So it's interesting. It almost feels a little bit more bird-like, like it's got a beak or something. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. So it's definitely more snake-like in the way that it's shaped on the front there this time. So um, I'm going to keep playing with this a little bit more. And I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. No, we didn't get this whole thing finished, but I will show you what it looks like tomorrow night when I see you again. Uh, until then, hope you guys have a great evening. And I hope you can join me again tomorrow night at 7 PM when we take the final design in uh, and do a model sheet for our 3D character. So. Hope you guys have a good night and I'll see you then. Thanks.